Hey everybody. Just hanging out here at the beach. Thought I would jump on for a few minutes. I just got doing done doing some morning gratitude and yoga on the beach with my family and all kinds of interesting things. See how fabulous it is out here? I don't know if anybody's out there right now, but that's okay. I'll talk anyways. I, um, wow. So we come, we come stay right here. We literally walk out of our door onto the sea well, onto the beach. It's fabulous. We have some wonderful patients and they always hook us up here. Usually the first week out of school. Um, it's just incredible. We got coastline for miles. We're down here at New Smyrna Beach, just south of Daytona. If you ever get the chance to come, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking and a lot of talking, and, you know, I've been doing some posts. I was crazy busy last week, so I didn't get done as much as I wanted to, but, um, you know, I, I talked about doing the magic and working on gratitude and thoughts and you know, just really coming from that thankful heart. And I just wanted to briefly talk about um, your biggest trials and your biggest stresses. And, you know, so often things happen to us and we wonder why, you know, I was a, I was a really sick child. I had severe asthma and allergies. I was actually in and out of the hospital in those bubbles and mist tents. And, you know, that got me involved in chiropractic. And then as I went on and became an adrenaline junkie and, got into all kinds of cool sports and then I got sick again with electromagnetics and you know we started the energetics office and energy medicine and dealing with EMF and frequency and lasers and biofeedback and, and all that and Abby and I had a conversation the other day about you know all the absolute incredible blessings that have happened to us because of the most intense, hardest, and worst thing we've ever been through. Um, most everybody that follows us knows, and if you don't know, you're about to find out, but when Skylar was born, she was literally born inside out. And it was horrific. She literally was in the hospital for years. She had colostomies. And, you know, when you're going through that and your child is all but ready to die, hey, Carolyn, oh man, I heard Perth was out of this world. I just talked to um, Philippa and Katie. Um, I got coast too. This is this is the east coast of the U.S. We're in Florida. Show us your blue eyes. I don't know if you can see them in here. And um, anyways, yeah, it's really bright out. But, um, you know, when we were going through that, I'm actually going to walk to the sandbar with my phone. And, um, you know, you're going through these struggles and everybody has trials. You know, whether it's a loss of a family member, business, bankruptcies, um, breakups. Um, people go through really harsh things, traumatic things, personal assaults, abuse. Um, physical, mental, emotional, all that stuff. And what I have personally found is if something is really hard, like you know you're just not gonna survive it, and yet you do survive it, in the end, you're a victor. And so often people come through those things feeling like a victim. Well, we were just talking about, you know, we had the incredible opportunity to go literally travel all over the world. I mean, we have been to Japan, we've been to Okinawa, we've been all over the U.S. We got to go to um, Gold Coast, Australia, and all of these incredible vacations that we've had the opportunity to go on are a direct result of, you know, Skylar. Um, I was literally stressed out and strung out in the medical profession as a regular chiropractor, seeing patients, billing insurance, and dealing with all the garbage. And it was really, really intense. And when we finally discovered the water, we didn't do it for a business. I, I actually told the lady, 
I'm not interested in one of those things. But I ended up using it for my patients and we just had some phenomenal results and the business grew to the point where it matched my chiropractic income pretty quick. And then all of a sudden, when Obamacare hit, our insurance collapsed and we, our income in the office dropped 70% in 90 days. So we were looking at having to work three to four times harder to make the same amount of money and maybe grow a little bit. And we decided to retire and move online. And as we started to tell our story more and more, we were shared, you know, how brutal it was for us and what everything went through with Skylar. And, you know, there was a lot in it. There was the medical bills, the money, the days where we didn't know if she was going to live, emergency runs to the hospital. And, and all of those trials come out and all of those things happen. But instead of bottling it up and trying to just get through it, we shared our story and how what we did to get through it and it's helped a lot of people. Um, Abby has some things in her past that you know has led her and I actually into the emotional clearings and the emotional recalibration stuff that we do. You know we can use biofeedback to reprogram the way you process events and the way you look at things. And so Ab's been able to reach out and help a lot of women that have had um, abusive relationships mentally, emotionally, physically, sexually, whatever you want to do. But we've been able to help a lot of people. We've been able to help a lot of relationships. You know, I came from a really bad marriage. Um, not going to get into it. But in that, I learned what to do to make a marriage great. You know, I always said that I wanted a perfect marriage and I thought I was working towards it. And the harder I worked, the worse it got. And then when I got remarried to Abigail, it's been everything I ever wanted. But I had to learn the pieces of the puzzle. And so I would just encourage you, if you're in the middle of your struggle, be okay with it. Oh, cool. There's a shell. Um, it's not over. You know, you don't have to know the why now. The why is probably who you'll be able to help later. Um, what I have found is struggles aren't necessarily about you. It's about you going through them and you can use those as an ability to have credibility with people that are suffering. Um, you know, the worst, I remember the worst day of my life after Skylar and, and it was like days and weeks where she would literally wake up and um, her bowel would explode literally every morning. I mean, it was everywhere. The floors, the bed, the cribs, the pillows. And I was in the shower. And I was just like, this is unreal. This isn't fair. I don't deserve this. How, why, do I, why did this happen to me? What did I do to blah, 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 blah. And I decided to bitch about it online briefly. Just to kind of quote, unquote, vent. And um, one of the people that, their child that was in the hospital, when Skylar was, that we got to know, and this is probably three years later, and here I am bitching about having to change diapers and wash her off. And he said, just to let you know, Michael, I would give anything in the world to be able to fix and, and, and change Stevie's diaper again because he didn't make it. You need to count your blessings. And here I was bitching about how bad I had it. And yet my child survived. And not only survived, she thrived. And I got to thinking about that the other day because um, we had a, 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 a mutual acquaintance that was sort of a friend of somebody that we knew and just had the most beautiful baby girl and she accidentally drowned in a pool at a friend's house. And you're like, I, I can't even imagine that. And yet, you know, I, I have no right to complain about what I went through. And then as I realized I moved from the victim mindset, not like right away. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. I mean, there's days where I looked at that and went, all this stuff that happened, and then it wasn't until probably six months to a year ago where I started doing the magic and it was about gratitude. And, you know, I was looking at all the financial responsibility, all the stress, all the bills, all the kids, everything mounting up on me. And I was so focused on that, but when I started to look down and like, 
All right, so let's write a pros and cons thing on, you know, the Schuylerisms as we used to call them. This right here is a Schuylerism. I, 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 I can work from here. I have a location-free job. I no longer have to be at the office. I don't have to sit there and wait for patients. I don't have to try and schedule. I don't have to bill insurance. And I make more money now than I did when I was in, in practice. And that's due to Skylar and her story and what we did with it. Um, you know, the fact that we've traveled the world. I was out here on the beach this morning at 8 o'clock with Jackie, Lexi, and Abby. And Lexi led us into her summer uh, some of her yoga this morning that she does for dance every week. One, it was amazing to do that with my family on a different beach, and we thought it'd be fun to travel the world and do that. Two, I realized just how out of shape I am. I got my ass kicked by my 11-year-old. Not exactly my finest daddy moment. But again, I learned something and now I have the ability to, to change that. Um, and, and it's all about growing. And what I have found is that if you're not growing, you're dying and you may already be dead. The cool thing is, is you can choose to get busy living and growing. If you want something different, go do it. Don't talk about it, just go do it. And I had all the excuses in the world, my business, my practice, my kids, my, no. They're not an excuse. They're the reason that I get to do it. It's what I can do with it. Um, and so you just take a really long look at your life. If you're not where you wanna be, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in work, whether it's with your kids, you know, and I'm not even going to begin to tell you that my, my, my life and my kids are perfect. We work at our relationships every single day because they're important. You know, I found out that the grass is always greener on anybody else's side of the fence than mine because I hate yard work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to seed, I'm not going to water, I don't, I don't have time for that. But I can pay somebody else to do that. Um, what I work on? I have the best relationship with my kids because we work at it every day. We work at it every week. Um, I didn't always have the best relationships with the people in my life until I decided that all those relationships that are important are worth working at and I work at them really hard and they get better the harder that I work at them. And it's not like it has to be hard work. It's the opportunity to spend time. Um, painting with Lexi, you know, cooking with Skylar, throwing, okay, so I went and did long toss with my son. Yeah, this is another one. So Connor is phenomenal at baseball, and I'm highly competitive. He goes, oh, let's go throw some long toss. I'm like, sure. And he says, yeah, I'll get the bat for you, Dad. I'm like, I don't need a bat. He goes, N no, you need a bat. I'm like, dude, I will bury you. He goes, Dad, I'm just going to say this bring the bat. I'm like, okay, whatever, you can bring the bat. I will out throw you, boy. And so we're out there throwing, and we have these great conversations, and we're like 20, 30 yards, and we're just throwing it back and forth. And then he backs up, and then he backs up. And I'm like, oh my God, that's 50 yards. All right, so I'm hoofing it. Well, then he goes back 7,500 yards. And he is just line driving it at me. And I realized, wow, he's got a lot of skill. And I was hitting it with the bat. And he was throwing it as far as I could hit it with the bat, which was ironic. But in doing that, we really worked on a relationship. And we ended up talking for quite a while. We went and got an ice cream afterwards. And you know, if you're struggling with your kids, if you're struggling with work, just look at it and go, what can I do different? For me, working you know, 10, 12 hours a day was detrimental to my family. The money was good, but my kids were derailing. Now, we hang out and we go do stuff. That was what was really, really important to me. And again, that, that opportunity came from the worst struggle of my life. I mean, days and weeks of waiting and not knowing if Skylar was gonna live. And, you know, I, we didn't do it day by day. We did it minute by minute. Some days it was just in the mornings and I had to get to lunch. 
and then I had to get to the kids out of school and then make it to dinner. You know, that's what started all the emotional recalibration work we did. It changed our business forever. That got us into the biofeedback. Um, I didn't have time to see a bunch of patients, so what we ended up doing is cluster booking patients. And then we would travel all over the U.S. and we would work on people in biofeedback and get them into the electromagnetics. All because we chose to take on the challenges that were helping form our life. And now Skylar's um, issues at birth have totally put me on a different course. We're, we're teaching health and wellness all over the world. We're creating a community of like-minded individuals that are parents that don't wanna just do the nine to five and, and take one vacation a week. We can literally travel the world and it's put us in touch with some of the top income earners in the world that make more money in a month than I used to make in 10 years. And they're friends. Again, because we shared our story, we shared our trials. You know, and I, I don't know about you, but I always look for mentors and coaches and people that I can look up to. And what I didn't realize was how many people were looking at me because they wanted what I have. And I thought, if you knew what I have, you wouldn't want it. No, that's not true. Um, and so a friend of mine, his name is Balaj, um, he said, always, always grateful, never satisfied. And that doesn't mean he's not content with what he has. It means that he's grateful for what he has and he wants to inspire people to more. And, you know, Skylar has hundreds of thousands and, that, and our story with the water has hundreds of thousands of hits almost a million plus on YouTube. I could never have done that. I didn't even know what I was doing. But yet, when you realize that we've impacted and touched that many lives, you have a story to tell. You're not the only person going through whatever you're going through. Tell your story, reach out to others, and it just might give them the hope to get through the day because it's where they are at. If, it hasn't, if it's not going well, it isn't over because everything ends well. If it's not well, it's not the end. Just keep going and um, use it as an opportunity to grow. Um, when you came into my Dr. Michael Explains board, you know, it says what happened to you is your story. You know, Skylar is my story. What I learned from it is the lesson, and that's what I teach other people, is all these things that I have learned from the stories and trials that I went through. Ironically, my greatest successes are not the ones that help inspire and teach me. I learned, I learned the hard way. I have to make the mistakes on my own. Um, and now I'm realizing that I can, I can learn from other people's mistakes, but your, what happened to you is your story. What you learn from it is your lesson. What you do with it is your mission. And our mission is not to go help gastroschisis babies and parents. That's a piece of it. But our mission is to help inspire and teach other families how to live a fuller, healthier life. How to really be vested in each other and make those priorities. What you feel about it is your passion. Abby and I are really, really passionate about other couples. Most people that go through what we went through end up divorced. Um, anybody that has a child in the hospital for more than three months is at a 97% divorce rate. Six months, it doesn't really, they don't ever really stay together. So we're an anomaly and we did a lot to work on it. We are really vested in helping each other grow in whatever way they need to grow. And so that's the passion. The way that that grows is your enthusiasm. The more excited you are about whatever it is you've learned whatever it is you're teaching, how you feel about it, and how you want to help others, that is grows from your enthusiasm. Whatever all those things add up to be, make sure that you use it to empower other people, because if you use it for yourself, you shut off, you shut down, you become reclusive. Um, Abby and I literally bought a ranch in the middle of Atlanta because we everybody would blow us out because we were emotionally taxed until we decided not to be. Um, and I'll say this as well, if you are depressed, 
you feel unworthy or you feel like a loser, it may not be you. It may be the people you're around. It doesn't mean they're good or bad. It just may be they're not your people. You know, as physicians, you know, Abby and I are into frequency, we're into energy, you know, we deal with, you know, lasers and foot baths. That's very fringe for most medical. We're very into manifesting and energy and positive thinking and reprogramming. It's not about positive thinking for me. It's about working through my own garbage and growing into a better person. And that's not really big for a lot of people. They're like, well, you know, you're kind of who you are. You just have to go through life. I don't want to go through life that way. And so, you know, it kind of wore on us because everybody was like, you know, that's kind of weird. That's hokey. Are you sure? You're crazy. That You shouldn't be, you know, whatever. We were the wrong people. So you may just have a higher vibe, a lower vibe, a different vibe than the people you're hanging with. You know, I just learned this one the other day. I wasn't broken. I felt broken inside. I felt damaged. I thought I was broken and I needed to put the pieces back together. That's not the way it was at all. I wasn't broken. I was hurt and I needed to heal. I would challenge you this, that if you're still alive, you're still kicking, you're not broken, you could be hurt. Find somebody who's been through what you've been through. Find somebody who's where you want to be and do what they do. That said, um, I think we're getting ready to go cook out a little bit. We're getting ready to fire up the grill here at the beach. I hope you all have a fantastic day. And uh, if this resonated with you or you liked what we had to say, throw some comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you want to chat, I'll be glad to chat. I'll be glad to help out. Y'all have a great day.